Hello and welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I'll show you how you can build low power compact solid state relays like this one. Now a relay like this can go hand in hand with your ESP8266 module since it is very compact and can be directly controlled by the 3.3 volt GPIO pin of your ESP. Now the reason for me building this project is that previously I have built many IoT projects in which AC appliances needs to be controlled and we used this electromechanical relay. Now everyone should be familiar with this kind of electromechanical relay but it comes with three major drawbacks. First thing, most of these relays are controlled by 5 volts and our ASP's GPIO pins is of 3.3 volts. So you need some kind of circuitry in between to drive these relays. And the second thing is electromechanical relays tend to consume more power than your solid state devices like a TRIAC or an SCR. And the third thing is electromechanical relays tend to wear off in time because of the mechanical operations inside it and the lifespan is comparatively less compared to a solid state relay. And another thing is that they are bigger than your solid state relay. So if you can see here, our complete solid state relay board is only going to be of this size. But when you compare it with an electromechanical relay, it's quite big. And also if you need to do some dimming or speed control applications, then your solid state relays will be much more handy than an electromechanical relay. Now in this video, I'll show you how you can build a solid state relay like this one. And I will show you how you can test it and how it works. So let's get started. This video was sponsored by PCBWay.com. PCBWay provides high quality and cost effective PCB prototype and fabrication services. They are well equipped to handle standard and advanced PCB designs and can also provide SMB stencil and PCB assembly services. They are known for their shorter lead time and customer service and also supports the maker community. So do consider giving them a try for your next PCB. Coming back to our project, this is the complete circuit diagram of our solid state relay. So let me put this electromechanical relay away and bring our PCB over here. So as you can see, the circuit is very, very simple thanks to a specially made triac called ACST from ST Microelectronics. So this project is based on the triac called ACST 2108BTR. So the triac is a, a surface mount device. This is the footprint of the triac. We will assemble the board and show you how everything works shortly. But before we get there, it is important to understand that this triac is not similar to our ordinary triacs. For a comparison, I have the famous triac over here, which is BT136, which we have used in many other projects. So normally in a triac like this, the three terminals will be main terminal 1, main terminal 2 and gate. Uh, but for this ACST, the pinouts are completely different. So let me place it side by side. This is the pinout of our ACST210 triac, which we will be using in this project. Uh, that is this one. And this is the normal BT136 diode, sorry, BT136 triac, which we have used in previous projects. For a triac like this, the terminals will be MT1, MT2 and gate. But for an ACST, the terminals will be output, common and ground. So this is the pinout diagram I took from the data sheet of our ACST. So as you can see, the pinout here uh, common should be connected to the ground of the uh, digital pin, which is controlling the triac. So this is a sample application circuit, which was also taken from the data sheet of the ACST. So if you see here, this is the common pin of the triac and it is connected to our microcontroller directly. So it's connected to the GPIO pin of our microcontroller directly, if you can see. And the gate pin is connected through a resistor. And you can directly control the triac with giving a digital signal from the GPIO pin. And the current consumption is also very, very low. Now, even the data sheet says that uh, for this triac, a snubber circuit is not required and you can control loads up to two amps without the need of any server circuits. So the circuit is going to be very, very simple. 
Now at the time of designing the board, I did not know that a snubber circuit is not mandatory. So what I did was on the back side of the board, I did provide option for optocouplers and few other components. So which uh, which turned out to be a problem when I was testing the board. So I made few corrections onto this board before I got this to work. So you don't have to worry about that because I have made all the changes and the Gerber file which you will be receiving will be the updated Gerber file. You can directly take it for fabrication and the design should work right out of the box so that is it the circuit is very very simple we just need a, a resistor connected to the common of a triac and this resistor value could be anything between 390 ohms to 470 ohms we have a small resistor and LED arrangement to know if the GPIO pin is on or off which is completely uh, optional so the logic uh, pin from your ESP is directly connected to the gate and the load is directly connected between your output and common terminals just like in the application circuit. So now let's go ahead and solder the board. So as since this project involves working with AC mains voltage, it is not uh, preferred to test this circuit on a prototype board because it is an SMD. So obviously we need a PCB to uh, test the circuit in the perfect way. So these PCBs were ordered from PCB way. To get your PCBs from PCBWay, just get into their website PCBWay.com and their website should load up something like this. Now all you have to do is enter the dimensions of your PCB, say mine for example is 50mm cross 50mm and the number of quantities I need is 5 and the layers is a 2 layer PCB and the thickness is 1.6mm. Then click on code now and it will take you to the next page where you can set few more parameters. Most of these you can leave to default but if you want to get a different color PCB, say for example mine here is white, so you can choose white or any other color and the price is going to be the same. On the right side you can see the build time will be 3 to 4 days and if I am shipping to United States through DHL, the price will be $18 for shipping and my total fee will be around $23. You can select the country and shipping services as per your convenience and see the shipping cost. Most probably if you are selecting China Post, the shipping price will be further reduced. Like in this case, it's only $11. Once you are comfortable with the build time and the shipping price, just click on save to cart. Under the next page, you will get a pop-up asking for the Gerber file. Now the Gerber file for this project can be found at the article linked at the description of this video, but you can use any Gerber file for fabrication. Once you have added the Gerber file, it will take 2-3 to three minutes to verify your Gerber file and then you can enter your address and proceed with payment. Within few days, your PCBs will arrive at your doorstep. These were the PCBs that I received. This is the back side and this is the front side. And as you can see, the build quality, the tracks, the wires, everything is perfectly fabricated and I did not have any problem with it. So let's go ahead and assemble these ports and see how the circuit works. So this is how a board looks after it has been assembled. As you can see here, I have made some changes to the board to get it working because I didn't know how an ACST works at the time of designing and I had to make some changes to get the circuit work. Now you don't have to worry about this because the Gerber file and the circuit diagram that has been presented to you is already been updated and the mistakes have been corrected. So you can use it directly and get it fabricated and it should work out of the box. Now uh, as you can see the board is assembled and I have the triac on the front side and few terminals on the back side to connect the face and neutral wires. The main component of this board is the ACST2108 BTR from ST Microelectronics as you can see here. Now this is a very cool device which you can use to control your AC appliances and the important thing is it doesn't need a snubber circuit and it can be controlled directly from a 3.3 volt GPIO pin without losing much power. So what we'll do is we'll hook up this uh, solid state uh, relay module with our ESP8266 board and we'll try controlling some AC appliances with it. So this is our test setup. As you can see in the middle, we have our ESP8266 along with our solid state relay module, which we just built. 
and the complete setup here is powered by a 3.3 volt breadboard uh, module which you can see on the left side you can use anything to power i have just used this one and the ac lamp the incandescent lamp on the top right corner is connected to our module over here through the green and yellow wires which stands for uh, phase and neutral so now what we'll do here is we will uh, power this on and uh, the push button on this board which you can see on the left can be used to uh, power our uh, I mean uh, turn on or off our AC load. So let's go ahead and test it. As you can see the module is very compact than a relay module. So this was the aim of our project. So this bulb will be turned on if we press the switch as you can see it is a 100 watts bulb. So I am just placing it slightly away from the camera because the brightness from the bulb tends to uh, dim the overall video. So I am just placing it slightly away from the camera. Now let's go ahead and turn this on. I just turned on the AC main supply so if I go ahead and press the white button now it should turn on as you can see the light is turning on turning off turning on off on off so this shows that the button is able to control the AC load that is through the solid state relay which we just built now one thing which you might have noticed in the video is that the bulb was flickering when it was turned on but uh, in the real world it did not happen it's maybe because of the frame rate of my camera but uh, to a naked eye you won't be able to see the flashing thing so let me go ahead and demonstrate it again if I turn on you can see the bulb turns on and if I turn off it turns off so again the flickering is visible only to a camera and not to a naked eye so as you can see the solid state relay is working very well and this is what we expected it to do and that's it thanks for watching have a nice day bye bye